This episode of Champ of the Tramp is brought to you by none other than Corona Seltzer. Take a good look at that. That is the blackberry lime. There is no better beverage than that. It's fully endorsed by the Champ and the Tramp down here in the podcast room, and we sip on nothing but, and we really do truly enjoy it. Yeah, I, I really do like this Corona Seltzer. It uh, hits a spot every time. Perfect for champions and trampians. Bring in the new year with Corona Seltzer. You know where you're going to. And it's it, it's light. You can drink it even on your diet, pal. Yeah, I can. I mean, you know, I'm trying to keep it cool, but we'll have a little sip. <laughs> Bring in the new year, guys. Corona Seltzer. Find it at your liquor stores today. I wanna, you know, I wanna fight the best guys. Like, if I'm gonna do this, like, I wanna compete against the best. And I was like, Hansel, man, like, these guys aren't even on pay per view, man. Like, why are you gonna make me sign with these guys? You know, like, I wanna go to Japan. Like, that's where the big fights are. You're fighting on the big arenas. You know, here it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's horrible. Right. If you go in there, people are booing when you take people down. You yeah, know? yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably still, true. Still true. true, true yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Joe Rogan actually has done a good job of, like, educating people. He really has. Yeah. More, man. He's he been really, great. He for really has, yeah. But I told Hansel, man, I don't wanna sign with the, you know, I'll go ahead, like, man, I don't wanna sign. He's like, man, these guys are gonna take the this. They're gonna take this sport to a level that we've never seen before. And I'm like, do nah. you think so, Hansa? I'm like, he's like, yeah. Real show, here we go. Real show, here we go. You know that it's gotta be that time, so this is what we chant. What keeps on getting them all amped in advance? Come on. You and I rocking out with Iron Man, F.E. You get the general's point of view on top of Roger's rants. Whenever it's happening out, we're putting the most minutes in. You already know what that's about. You know that win is win. Crush whatever's on task. Check the podcast. It's the champ and the tramp. Let the bomb blast. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Champ and the Tramp. I have a special guest on the couch tonight. My professor, Ricardo Almeida, um, he's a multiple-time Brazilian national champion, and uh, he's a Pancrase champion, pride, and UFC veteran, uh, fourth-degree black belt, mm -hmm. fifth? Fourth. Fourth-degree black belt under Hezel Gracie. He gave me my black belt, um, a mentor of mine, a good friend of mine, someone that uh, I trust with my career with, you know, <laughs> and uh, a lot of people don't know, I'm, I, uh, I, I, when I had my first loss in the UFC, um, during that camp, I kind of knew I needed to find a place to train because I was kind of that was the first camp I trained full time without having a job. And during that camp, I was kind of like you know making up my schedule as I go. It just wasn't very routine, and I knew I needed to find a place. I, I ended up losing that fight, and I found Ricardo, and that really kind of was the 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 turning point in my career that that got me to the title. So Ricardo made it. Thank you for coming on the show, my man. It's a pleasure, man. It's awesome. Yeah. Now, Ricardo also owns uh, Ricardo Almeida Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Robbinsville, New Jersey. Yes, sir. So, Ricardo, now, like, I'm, I just feel it's weird for me to ask you questions that I know the answer to, you know, yeah, <laughs> right? it, if man. I've known you so well. But um, a lot of people don't. You, you obviously are Brazilian. You're from Brazil, but you were born in the U.S., right? Tell me how you ended up being born in the U.S., went back to Brazil, got into Jiu-Jitsu, and then came back to the U.S. to, you know, continue uh, teaching. So when my parents finished the uh, school, they had a scholarship to come uh, here to the U.S. to study. So my dad was doing um, a master's in environmental engineering. And during that time I was born, and when he got done with his master's, we moved back to Rio, moved back to Brazil. You know, so actually, they say I learned English before I learned Portuguese. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? yeah. yeah. Wow. So, that, you know, so how long were you in the U.S. before you went back? Like a year and a half. Okay. You know, yeah. as soon as they got done with their master's, they moved back. And, and uh, I grew up in Rio when I was 20. I moved back up here, lived right. with Henzo, right. and, yeah. you know, started my whole jiu-jitsu career. Now, you know, Ricardo's a fighter, a jiu-jitsu teacher, but people don't know. You, you're a very intellectual person, you know, you know, speak very well, very articulate. I feel like his English is definitely better than mine. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no, that. I mean, obviously, your parents are very studious. You know, they were in the U.S. studying. I mean, wh wh what did they do? So my dad was originally like an environmental engineer. My mom was, uh, she graduated from psychology. She was actually like an Olympic level swimmer. And uh, she had the Olympic index to go, I think it was the 70, 76 or 72 mm -hmm. Olympics. And she just kind of got, you know, burned out from swimming. And she did psychology. She taught uh, physical education classes. She was in, you know, a couple of national, um, couple of national teams for like masters. My dad was... You know, he started as an environmental engineer, and then he kind of worked his way up. When he retired, he was working with um, uh, sustainability, like, uh, you know, stuff to do with the environment. Yeah. And, um, yeah, pretty also, also taught classes in, the in a right. big university <clears throat> in Rio. So, yeah, 
I grew up. Was with, was he had some do uh, economics too? Your dad. Yeah, like he just worked in the government, yeah, yeah. and then he worked for the private sector. Right. Just like as far as like uh, environment and sustainability, he was like a big, uh, was like a big voice in in, in the Brazilian culture. You know? Ah, very cool. Yeah. And, and at what point did you in in Rio, right? When, when did you start training jiu jitsu? So I started when I was fifteen. I think uh, you know, growing up in Rio at the time. You know, if you're a boy, like, you're going to go out, you're going to get in fights, someone's going to, you know, try to mess with you. And my dad, like, he did karate. And he wanted me and my brother to learn how to protect ourselves. So he took us first to a karate school. And I had a friend from um, from high school. My first year of high school was like, Ricardo, you know, like, so what are you doing? He's like, oh, man, I started doing karate. I was like, what do you mean karate, man? You can't do karate. You know, back then, that's all people knew, you know. Yeah. Nobody really knew too much about jiu-jitsu. But in Rio, there was a big culture of jiu-jitsu. So this guy's like, oh, Ricardo, you got to come do jiu-jitsu. I'm like, oh, man, I don't do that thing. I'm not going to be there hugging guys and things <laughs> like that. And one day he finally convinced me. I mean, I took a first class and that was it. Uh-huh. I was hooked ever since, you know. Now, were you at a, a Gracie school right away? Right away, wow. uh, Gracie Baja was with wow. the walking wow. school. So, oh, I, wow. wa- so I walked into Gracie Baja, you know, Master Carlos Gracie Jr. Henzo's teacher was teaching the class. Wow. I was like too big to be in the kids' class, so I actually had to take the adults' class. And Hans was the, the only black belt at Gracie Baja. And he had his own school, so he normally typically wouldn't come. But when Hanzo showed up, like everybody just kind of sat against the wall. Yeah. We would just watch him roll, you know. Like there wasn't too many black belts back in the day. So when you had someone like that show up, you know, it's it's kind of like when you guys show up at somebody's gym, uh-huh. everybody just stops and watches, yeah. you know. Well, y- y- you know, like uh, people out that don't know about jiu-jitsu or even Roger, like the lineage. I mean, mm-hmm. the lineage of, of that is you're right there. You're at the very pinnacle of it all. I mean, uh, Carlos Crazy Jr. learned from. His dad, Carlos Gracie, and who learned from the Jap- yeah. Je- you know, Helio and the Japanese, and right, that's pretty much the start of it. Yeah, man, Pre- it's pretty much you know, like the other day I watched that um, was it Ford versus Ferrari movie? Yeah, yeah. Like when things are kind of like starting to like growing up at that time, you felt a little bit like that because there was only four big jiu-jitsu schools in um, in Rio, and that was the only big jiu-jitsu school there were in the whole country. You know? Wow. So we started, and it was very comp- competition-oriented. So when you went to compete, like, like if you lost, like, people, you know, guys would make fun of you. Or if you lost to someone from that came from, like, a judo school and wasn't that good in jiu-jitsu, guys would make fun of you. But we were, you know, in a, in a healthy way, but we were nothing more than just to beat all the other guys from the other schools. Right. And it was, uh, it was all for, you know, no money, no sponsors, mm. just all for, like, the pride of your school yeah, and your yeah. team, you know? Is that is that really? I mean, the the origin of it really where it started, or does Brazilian Jiu Jitsu go back in history further than the Gracie family? So the Gracie family learned from uh, Mitsu Maeda, which was like a like a Japanese emissary, and as far as I know, they were in Manaus, which was a port. So back in the day, you know, people traveled by boat. This yeah. is like before airplanes in the beginning of the twentieth century. And the Japanese guy came to to Manaus and stayed there for only a few years. So I think the the Gracies only learned jujitsu from this guy for four years, and he went back to Japan. Oh wow! But he taught him. They say that when he traveled the world by you know by 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 boats, like he'll go to these ports and challenge people for fights. He's like I'll fight anybody in here. You just gotta put this little jacket on. <laughs> and they'll have him put like a gi ja- a gi top a gi. on. Yeah. I freaking yeah. grab him like judo, toss him on their head, <laughs> or you know freaking <laughs> choke them. And but he taught the Gracies the strategy of you know if you get in a fight with someone, take somebody down, get on top, yeah. smash him, and then if they turn their back, choke them. You know like and yeah. and then the Gracies in their attempt to to grow the sport, they just, you know, pretty much how the first UFC happened, it was a showcase for jiu-jitsu, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. to show people the effectiveness of, of jiu-jitsu as a martial art. At the time when nobody really knew ground fighting that right. much, you yeah. know. So there was all these fights, and then, you know, the Japanese came. Um, there was a couple of challenge fights there. But, you know, or eventually the Gracies moved from Manaus to Rio, which at the time was the capital. So jiu-jitsu began being taught to the elite of the elite in Brazil. You know, it's kind of like if you have a school in, in D.C. and you're teaching all these generals and, 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 and you know, the most influ- lobbyists mm-hmm. and the most influential people in the country. And, you know, they had to manufacture their own geese. Like when you came into the Gracie Academy... Like the geese themselves, the uniforms they train belong to the academy. Like you go, you get like a like a robe at a country club oh, or wow. something like that, and then you just drop it in the when in, you're done. in, in the wow. dirty clothes. Wow. They used to have, from what I understand, like industrial washers, and they'll take the the uniforms to 
to like a property they had in the mountains. I actually had a chance to go to Elio's property one time when Master Call was and spend mm. the whole day there wow. where they used to go and wash the geese on a Friday and bring, in, bring them wow. back Monday for classes. So it was really like something, you know, really built something incredible out of nothing and a lot of it through fighting, you know. It's certainly arguable that the UFC may not be what it is today without Hoist Gracie. And, oh, absolutely. You know, well, it, a, w- it wouldn't be. 100% yeah, no, it wouldn't be. As a non, non-fighter, but a UFC fan who's been watching from, from day one, I mean, he really put Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu on the map. What was it doing as far as schools go in the United States before you know you, the early days of UFC? Was there many schools over here? There wasn't none, right? None. There was very few schools in the United States. And, and, and what happened in the first UFC is like the dominance of the, the, the strategy yeah. and the technique of jiu-jitsu because people didn't know what it was. Like that's something that had already been happening in Brazil for like 80 years, you know? So I had started training already jiu-jitsu. I was like 15, 16. I remember... You know the, the 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 Monday morning quarterbacks at the academy. Like after we finally got to watch the the VHS and people started talking about it, he's like, "Man, what took Hoist so long? Yeah. You know what I mean, like, <laughs> like why didn't they put Hickson in there? Like, Hickson would have yeah, killed those guys yeah. in a minute." And that was the whole marketing thing with that. Hori on the older brother crazy like man if Hickson goes in there Hickson is jacked he looks like an athlete right it's not it's gonna look like he's just a you know it's like a badass. I, I, I you send Hoist in there yeah. and you know. And he, and he uh, didn't so look like un, a badass. I'm un, assuming, you know? He was such a killer. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, and there was no weight limits back then, obviously. Nah. It, you know, and, and and you fought multiple times a night, and he was just going through guys three times his size. It's yeah. crazy. So when back then, when you're learning just, is, is obviously so, so fight-oriented, right? I mean, obviously, that's their pushing jiu-jitsu for fighting, right? I mean, back then, or, or? Yes and no, you know, like there was the, you know, it's kind of like a... You know, like a wrestler. Like if you take a wrestler and you make like a like a high school wrestler fight anybody that doesn't have necessarily martial training, they're gonna kill everybody. I don't care who it is, mm-hmm. and pr- and probably most people that have training. You know, just because it's a it's a combat sport, it's hand on hand. If you're able to, you know, pick someone up and slam them on their head, it's pretty much all you need in fighting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you know, every wrestler has a strong right hand because they put so much weight in the front leg. In jujitsu, because you know, we just sparred and rolled every day with the intent of winning in competitions. You know, once you put your hands on someone that, that someone that doesn't train, no matter how much weight they lift, like you mm. just toss them around. Yeah. You know, and once you take them down, they don't know how to move on the ground. Right. That was just pretty much it. Yeah. You know, and to this day, honestly, we see that with our, with our kids. You know, like unless it's like maybe a wrestler, like if you teach a little kid jujitsu, he goes and gets in the scuffle at school. Once right. take somebody down, they don't really know it's what over, to do. Yeah. Nah. I nah. think people are starting to become more understanding of that now no. it's a different world now well, yeah you know? well they know too you see cauliflower here let me yeah, uh, yeah, let me, yeah, let me yeah. yeah think about what i'm about to say here <laughs> for sure yeah and um so then so so you, you competed in the brazilian nationals how many times you, three times you won it i won one two three times three times yeah, yeah. and how how was that back then was it like you said there's four main schools. I mean, are you, you're, there's rivalries, right? And you, got, and you guys even didn't you guys fight in the street too? Like so I would, competed in the first Brazilian Nationals. Actually, I competed in the. They had like a 16 and 17 year old division, so it's before you fight the adults, you know. Mm. So my first Nationals was that that, like a junior, and then I started competing in the adults, and it was before even the Brazilian Federation was created. Just one day, some guy decided to put on. Oh, it's the national tournament. I'm going to invite all the big schools, and ah, cool. everyone decided to show up, and then. You know, through time, jujitsu started to get more organized. But yeah, it was it was it was a lot of rivalry, but it wasn't it was never like too too bad as far what as what about the, the, the Luta Libre guys though? That was yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty bad, man. Like we'll go out and <laughs> I don't know about this. Yeah, I want to hear about. So Luta Libre was the guys that learned jujitsu too, but they just took the gi off, and they you know a bunch of like uh, you know big guys. You know they all juiced up, and 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 you know they were just our rivals. And, you know, if you saw one of those guys, like, at night, like, if we were out partying at night and you saw one of those guys and it was a bunch of them, like, a lot of times we have fights with these yeah, guys, man. Yeah. A lot of times. A lot of times you'll be, like, huge. You just close the night wherever, wherever jiu-jitsu guys were and the Luta Libre guys where the fights would start in the club, go outside, and, you know, <laughs> I'm sure, like, a seaside brawl. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Roger's been in a few. You've been in a few, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of yes, legendary yes, for him. Yes, yes. Everybody knows Frankie from some fight that he had in Seaside. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> before the UFC. That's where I honed the skills a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So, and then you you also compete ADCC, which mm-hmm. is Abu Dhabi Combat Club, mm-hmm. and uh, 
You took second now, right? Two times. Two, uh, time. two times I took second. You so went against Josh Barnett. I saw. I Dude, pulled yeah, up. Yeah. yeah. Went against some some pretty serious names. Barnett, yeah. Jacare, right? Barnett, Jacare, um, Dean Lister. Not, not yeah, too many I saw guys Dean from Lister on that list. Oh, Mike Van Arsdale. Yeah, Van Arsdale. That's what I was saying. There's yeah. the wrestler. You, you, yeah, yeah. You guillotine them, right? Or uh, arm lock. Arm lock. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. arm lock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was That's the best it. wrestler I've ever seen, yeah. Oh, he was nasty. Yeah, he was world champ. He you know? tossed some guys yeah. around at the tournament. Like, I couldn't believe. He was so technical. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he was a freak. He, he was physically like a freak. Yeah. He looked like it. Yeah. I think Gordon Ryan also went up against Josh Bournet, didn't he? He did. Yeah. Recently. Yeah. Recently. Yeah. I think maybe in the last, no, no, in some, like, EBI or something, I think, right? Yeah, it wasn't something too long like ago. Yeah. And then, how did you get to the U.S. from, from, from from all that, when so, did you decide you wanted to come to the U.S.? Was it something you, you like growing up you knew you were gonna do? Was it something you, you what jujitsu brought you to? Or so you know, I think that knowing that I grew up here, like I always had the curiosity. You know what I mean? Like you grow up in Brazil and you watch movies and you're like, oh man, like that's that's California, that's you know that's New that's L.A. that's New York, New Jersey. No, yeah. not, I know. So no one says that. There was no Sopranos <laughs> back there. Uh, I'm sure if I go back and look at some movies, there will be some New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you grow up and you, you know, I think the whole world looks at the United States um, as sort of mm. like you know the place that you want to go to and, and want to be, or at least one day visit it, or you know, have an experience. You know, and I had the American passport. Uh, in Brazil, when you go into university, like every university, now it may be different, but at the time, every university you have to do a different SAT, and everyone wants to get into the public universities because they're free, you know, and they're mm. the best schools. So I got into the Federal University of Rio. But man, like I used to have to take two buses to go to school. It was like a oh, nightmare. Wow. I had to go like cross the whole town. It was like a crazy, you know, like a typical like morning commute, like through two like street buses. And I hated it. And I couldn't train because I would have to leave super early, go like two and a half hours away, spend the whole day. What, in what were you studying? I was a uh, 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 industrial engineering. Okay. Oh, so, shit. you know, in between the, in between the, so the dad, bus rides, yeah. And you know, uh, thermodynamics and and you know experimental physics. I'm like, man, I can't, <laughs> I can't do this. You lost me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I couldn't train them. The biggest yeah. thing is, I, you know, once I got into university, it was really hard for me to train. And I had a friend that knew Hanzo, and Hanzo had moved here the year before, and he was looking for someone to come teach at a school that he was about to open. And I was like, I'll come there, you know. Yeah. And uh, Hanzo took me under his wing and. Uh, here I am, still yeah. in New Jersey, you know. And that, that was that was actually in Philly, though, right? The first school. First school was in yeah, Philly. Yeah. yeah. And Ninety what year was that? Ninety-seven. Wow, wow. Was and then you moved. You lived. You lived with Henzo, right? At first. First, I lived with Henzo. Yeah. Then I lived in uh, South Jersey, actually, like Cherry Hill area. Then, man, I moved back up uh, near Henzo because Henzo had a scumbag partner that was like stealing money from him. Oh wow. And you know that was a really tough time for everyone. So Henzo had to close the school. I didn't have a place to teach, so I started teaching private to Dr. Allen, oh, Dr. Wow. Brack, Get who's, out a, you know, who's a friend that's been wow. with us to this day. And uh, then I opened like my own little place. Um, Hanzo got me somebody that found a, a place for me. I, mean, I had no money, you know, and Hanzo was you know struggling at the time too because yeah. he's having to pay lawyers and all this. Right. He closed his big schools now. So I lived at a trailer, man, wow. at Atlantic Highlands. Yeah. And I thought I was like Mel Gibson in, uh, in <laughs> a Lethal Weapon. I was like, man, <laughs> I'm like the coolest dude. You know, like I live in a trailer by the water. And, you know, I, I didn't know what living in a trailer meant back then. I didn't, I didn't really <laughs> That's care. Awesome, man. And then I moved closer to New York because I wanted to train more. Um, and then eventually I kind of made my way back down yeah. here. Now, th didn't you go to school in Switzerland for a little bit, though? I went, I did an internship in Switzerland. So when I first moved, like these first few years, while I was like doing the jiu-jitsu thing, I was uh, um, taking some co uh, classes at like a local uh, community college. I wanted to eventually transfer. I kind of didn't know what I was going to do. And yeah, my dad got me like an internship in Switzerland. So I lived there um, three months. Oh, okay. Learned a little, bit, a little okay. bit of French at the time. Yeah. Worked for the, what was it? World Business Council for Sustainable Development. I don't know what oh, these guys do. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I actually work in the climate change. How do you even remember that? Yeah. 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 Climate yeah. change department. Yeah, that's that was. Climate uh, change. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's going to be pr beautiful though, Switzerland, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Geneva is like on a lake. Every day after work, everybody just kind of goes to the lake. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, like a, it's like a beach, you know? Yeah. It's kind of yeah. like going to the beach. That's cool. Yeah. How about that? Okay. Ricardo, mm. people, people that don't know, Roger, uh, Ricardo's first fight ever was in Pride. 
Oh, no way. Yeah. Saitama, where well, you yeah. fought. Yeah, Saitama. Yeah, <laughs> Saitama <laughs> Arena. Yeah. Against who? Because somebody got hurt, right? You were, he, yeah. he was there to he was there to, to, to oh, help corner? help Henzo, corner Henzo, Hill's right? brother, Hyan. Oh, Hyan, yeah. yeah. And someone got hurt, and he jumped in. No Dude, shit. Fucking wild, man. Never did a round of sparring, never, like... Never did anything. You just like, all right, yeah, cool. You know, who was did your you, opponent? Anybody I would know? Akira Shoji he was a pretty yeah. big uh, Japanese guy back in the day from the Pride days. He was one of those like tough, rugged Japanese guys okay. that just gave everybody hell um, in those times. Fought Mark Coleman. He fought like he fought a couple of big names. Uh, Vovchenchin. Yeah, yeah. He Vovchenchin, fought a couple. That guy was a monster. Fought dude. a couple of the big names uh, back in the day. You win? Yeah. Yeah, right on. So I won that fight. You know, first fight. I'm in Japan. You know, they had. Three days before, some Brazilian guy gets hurt, and I think it was Hyan. Was it Hyan? Was I was with Hyan and Luca, the the creator of Gracie Magazine. Oh yeah, yeah. And somebody was, was like, man, Hyan goes like, Ricardo, why don't you go? I was like, yeah, sure. If you think I'm ready, I'll go. Call hands with. And then they called hands with. He's like, cause he want to do it. Cause I always said, man, I don't yeah. want to fight. I just want to do yeah. jiu-jitsu, you know. And yeah, I I won that fight. This was like a December. And we spent like another two weeks in Japan. Hanzo had like a pro wrestling event. Ah, okay. We come back to the U.S. I'm in I'm at Hanzo's Academy, and it used to be a school that the elevator opened, and you were in the school. Like there was like yeah. no walking, so the elevator opened. This bald headed guy walks in. This other guy with a goatee, and then I'm, I see them talking to Hanzo. I'm like, man, what the frick are these guys, man? I'm training. I'm looking. You know, it was uh, Dana and Lorenzo. Yeah. <laughs> and so Dana and Wyatt and Lorenzo Fertitta walk in. They trying to get hands. They had just purchased the UFC. And they were trying to sign talent, you know. So they were trying to sign Hanzo to to fight in the UFC. And he was like, no, man, I have a contract with Pride. But I have these two kids over here. <laughs> they get them. It was me and Matt Serra. Ah, so we gosh. signed we signed okay. for the UFC at the same time. We had our first fight, our first fight together. And, and I mean, I remember I didn't want to sign with the UFC. Because back then, you know, the UFC wasn't on pay-per-view. Yeah, right. You know, all the big fights were in Pride. Yeah. And I was like, man, like if I'm going to fight. Like, what I'll, year would that have been? 2000. 2000 2001 so this was the beginning of 2001 yeah. and i'm like man i want to you know i want to fight the best guys like if i'm going to do this like i want to compete against the best and i was like hands on man like these guys aren't even on pay-per-view man like why are you going to make me sign with these guys you know like i want to go to japan like that's where the big fights are you're fighting on the big arenas you know here it's mm -hmm. you know it's horrible right. if you go in there people are booing when you take people down you yeah. know <laughs> it's true yeah <laughs> it's probably still, true still, still true, true, true this, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well it, joe rogan actually done a good job of like educating he me really has yeah. more, man. he's he been really, great he for really jiu -jitsu. has yeah but i told him man i don't want to sign with the you know i go here like man i don't want to sign He's like, man, these guys are gonna take the this. They're gonna take this sport to a level that we've never seen before. And I'm like, nah. do you think so, Hanza? I'm like, he's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. Wow. Yeah. For Hanza to see that coming, that's you know, I mean, shit. Yeah. Dame, Dame was a street guy at that time, right? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Hanza's, you know, has been very influential. I think for a lot of people, but especially yeah, for me, like certain things that I'm like, man, this guy is like. You know, because so, he also has that larger than life person. He does, now, man. You know? he does. Yeah, he really does. The the UFC was fighting prior to 2000, right? But he partnered. That was when he partnered with the Fertitas, right? Yeah. So you know, the UFC started, and then there was the whole thing that they, you know, they, Governor McCain was trying they, to shut yeah, down. Yeah, they, they got yeah. shut down. They had to move, right. I guess, from Colorado to yep. New, to New Mexico or something like that. On over remember the original uh, guy on the front yeah. was like a bodybuilder dude. Right, yeah. was like the, they still have that. They still have that, that, that logo. Really? I mean, not uh, it's not the logo, but they still like sell that. So so sure. for years, like they weren't really like on on the main pay per view. You know, like back in the day, you had like you know like cable. They had like the main box that you mm -hmm. could buy pay per views, and there was like the other ones that like you couldn't really buy. And it was hard. I was like, man, like if I'm gonna be a pro yeah. fighter, like I want to be a pro fighter. Yeah. Like I don't want to be like, uh, you know, you know, fight on the on the <laughs> C League. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember. I remember when it went. Like I remember watching '93. I think I watched the second UFC mm -hmm. live, like live. And then after that, I feel like they kind of went underground, right? They did. Yeah. yeah. And then in college is when it kind of came back out. That's yeah. like 2000s yeah. in the 2000s, yeah. 2005s. You know, between that and time. It, it wasn't really until the, you know, and then I fought with the UFC, and you know, we had some really big events like they did a big push like you know back in the day they got like Carmen Electra like and you know some of these like TV you know movie stars to come to events but it still wasn't big it wasn't really until the ultimate fighter that yeah, really right, took off right you know? Forrest Griffin and um, yeah. Bonner Bonner put yeah. that yeah yeah that was uh, it up for that sure. was it was an epic fight but now it wouldn't even be you know what I mean was uh, it was kind of like a street fight with those guys going out? Yeah, no, but that was still a fucking it great was, fight it was, to watch. Yeah, man. It was. You know, 
Tell let's tell okay, so you're also a Pan Craze champion. That's just mm-hmm. an, a, another promotion that was in Japan at the yeah. time, right? Yeah. And uh the best stories he fought he fought uh Nate Marquardt, right? Yeah, for the title. Yeah. That was a, a bench clearing brawl, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta you gotta, a little just, bit, a little you gotta bit. tell this story. It's fucking Hensel's just so funny, bro. <laughs> Yeah, has the best. so yeah another one, another one that Hansel always has like a like a huge foresight you know like so you know I fought I hit a little bit in the UFC and then I wanted to go back and fight in Japan but I couldn't get a fight in prize I'm like oh I'll fight in Penn Crazy a little bit and you know they had like a uh, there wasn't like a huge event but they had a very big uh, like tradition in Japan like Baz Rutten had fought there you know Frank Shamrock yeah. had fought there you know they were like champs this is when they used to do palm strikes. Yeah, yeah. By the time I fought, it was just, you know, regular rules. No elbows, but you could kick a knee on the ground. So yeah. like a little bit soccer different. Soccer kick. Yeah, yeah, soccer kick in the head. And, you know, I won a couple of fights, and they put me to fight for the title with Nate Marquardt. And, I mean, you know, he's like, you know, he's talking, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And, like, I wasn't really used to that. You know, I was like, man, like... If I get a submission on this guy, I'm not letting go. I'm going to break his arm. <laughs> I'm going to freaking choke him. Because this guy's talking too much. He's starting to irritate me. And he wasn't, like, huge. So we're, like, you know, when we're doing interviews, it's like the, I'm in the same room with this guy. You know? yeah. Yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. So I finally get a guillotine in the fight. I took him down, and he popped up. I, I grab a guillotine, and, you know, he starts tapping. And I don't let go, and I don't let go. And, and Hanzo anticipated. So when I finally let go, rightfully so, Nate punches me in the face. You know what I mean? I deserved it. And then Hanzo goes and freaking kicks, kicks him. Yeah, right. Kicks him right in the face. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. No, first he slapped him, and then he kicked him, you know. And then we all apologized. He slapped him, <laughs> kicked him, and then he picked him up and hugged him. You know what I'm saying? Oh. And then we all apologized. But, yeah, Hanzo, Hanzo I think when he saw that I was squeezing he knew that nate was gonna hit me and yeah yeah that's good i deserve that one that's good. <laughs> <laughs> a good friend doesn't break up a fight he comes in with a flying yeah, kick yeah, and that, yeah. that's just that's insane no. right <laughs> no oh man fought, and that, go ahead. i was gonna say fought matt hughes as well what a legend that guy is you yeah, know? Man, yeah 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 i wait, that's the one i wish i could have back but I you know, know, I'm sure. we, we all have plenty, those there's plenty, yeah. there's plenty i got it I know, he's just a sure. beast savagely strong that guy is yeah it's man. like that farm strength you know yeah we call it, yeah, call it Roger. He, I, we call it Roger Strength. No, maybe maybe <laughs> twenty years ago. Um, how's he was doing now? Any any updates on him since his train um, accident? I mean, I think you know. I guess he's all right. He's um he's definitely not you know with himself or not how he used to be. Yeah. I imagine he he actually went to that bio accelerator place too. Oh, he did it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how it helped him or anything. Yeah. I think they showed him on TV like a couple of UFCs ago. Yeah. I think I saw him look like he was. Yeah, I saw some special right. with him yeah. where they did like an update and how he was doing. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, that's I, rough. I can't imagine being him who was so physically motivated. I mean, even outside of the UFC, I mean, he, was, he like works on his farm all the time and shit. And to have that taken away from you, you know what I mean? It's yeah, gotta be, yeah, it's got to be really. Oh, yeah. You gotta. That's a crazy situation in front of the train. You wonder, yeah. you wonder yeah. how that went down. I you know. know. Yeah, I feel like we didn't get like the whole scoop on that. You know what I mean? It was very yeah. like. Isn't, still, isn't, there's not that many details. Isn't the story right? that he was on his cell phone? He was. I mean, this is I this is not like a phone. train around here. This is the middle of the country. It's like yeah. a freight train that goes right. through cornfield. But, but, but Chris works trains. He says a lot of people they fucking don't want to. They don't want to wait because they you get stuck on a train. You might have to wait 15 minutes. So they'll boom, they'll, they'll try, try to they'll try to beat yeah. it. I, mean, I don't know if that ha- that's what happened, but Oof. yeah, or maybe he just fucking fell asleep. I thought I heard. I, I mean, it could be way up, but I thought I heard that he was on his cell phone and just wasn't paying yeah. attention. Uh, yeah. well, that's a shame. Yeah, didn't see it coming. But um, so then you went to Pancreas and you came back to UFC, and that's when we kind of hooked up. I believe in 08, So no, right? I I I went uh, I fought in Pancreas, then I went in back and fought in Pride. Mm. Um. It was like Grace's versus Japan. That was pretty cool. Hanzo got hurt, and I replaced him. So it was me oh, wow. and Hanzo's two brothers against like three Japanese. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. Me, yeah. High you know, and High and Half. Oh, wow. Against three Japanese. And I was like, man, I can't lose this one. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like a freak. And then I won that, and uh, man, at the time, like I just, I was kind of like done with fighting a little bit. Like the, the money wasn't there. I'm like, right. man, I'm, I went to Japan, I don't know, like 10 times in a year. You yeah. know, like for that fight in Pride, I made I don't know, like thirty grand. I was like, yeah, like you know, I'm yeah. not gonna be able to feed my kids. You know, I'm not gonna be able to have the lifestyle that I want. I just wanted to focus on my school and build my school. So I stopped fighting in 2003, and I took five years off. Wow. I came back wow. in 2008, and that's the time that you were fighting. Yeah. yeah, I was actually supposed to fight like cage, cage, uh, cage CFFC, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. and. Um, I was supposed to fight there, and then that event got canceled. And Who then, are you supposed to fight? Oh, you're supposed to fight Holman, right? Dennis, Dennis Holman. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, remember one time that 
had like a brawl. Like you, you guys weren't trained with us yet, but Dante slapped yeah, one of the guys. Uh, Dante and, fought the guy, beat him, and then smacked him afterwards. <laughs> was he was great. like you're the coach from the team that you guys trained, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freak that guy. <laughs> Those are clowns, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. But anyways, I I was supposed to fight here, and but I took a five-year hiatus, and then Joe uh, Joe Silva at the time, uh, I think he called me or I called him. Man, I'm looking to come back. He's like, yeah. Heck. Oh, no. The fight got canceled. He called me. He found my phone number. He called yeah. me. He's like, oh, why don't you come to the UFC? So I signed for the uh, Super Bowl weekend. Um, and then I think it's when we met, man. Yeah, yeah. You know? It was. Right. I think right after you fought is when I when I came, I came yeah. back, came to the gym. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a good ride since, yeah. I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. When these guys came... Uh, it was him and Chris Liguori, you know? They were yeah. leaving the place that they were training. I, we almost, we got, you know, Dante, like, smacked around, like, their coach or whatever. Like, we almost got in a fight with these guys. And Chris where, Liguori... Where did, where did you leave? But That was Rhino. Rhino, yeah, Rhino, 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 Rhino. So Chris comes first. Uh, Frankie had just gotten married. He was in his honeymoon, you know? Yeah. And I I had seen Frankie fight locally. I knew he was an incredible fighter. I saw his, you know, his first couple fights in the UFC. Like, it was amazing. And um, yeah, I remember the fight with Gray. I was like, man, like... Like what happened to this some kid? Jiu-jitsu. No, 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 no <laughs> not at all. Because he, he 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 wasn't great in jujitsu. Yeah, I was like, yeah. man, like what happened? Like this kid was just so good in the other fights. I was like, man, something happened with him. I'm like, anyways, and then I found out they wanted to come and train. I was like, man, like, that's awesome. Those guys are really good. I had seen them fight a lot. And at the time I was fighting, you know, I was like, man, it'd be great. I I get to train with these guys. And Chris comes, and Chris was super tough, like, you know, never gets tired, and, you know, freaking, like, to this day, he could do five rounds, and yeah. he doesn't even train, you know, I couldn't believe how he's like that. And, you know, Frankie comes in, and I, you know, I sit down, I said, like, man, so what's your goal, you know, what are your goals? I was, like, older than these guys, and I'm like, what are your goals? Frankie's like, I want to be a, I want to be a UFC champ. I'm like, holy shit, man, this kid got balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and, and, like, what, three years later he was champ? Two yeah. years later? Two years, yeah, yeah, two years later, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like this guy would have been champion no matter what he trained. So you, uh, you, you, no, you came no. in after your first grade fight? First grade, yeah, yeah, right, 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 right then, literally okay. like the yeah. two months, like a month after. It's uh, one of the I greatest came, trilogies yeah. of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, no, nah, I always say it takes a village. It really does take a village to, you know, like yeah. they say, it takes a village to raise a kid, it takes yeah. a village to, to raise yeah. a fighter, and uh, definitely, um, I, I don't think I, I'd want to want to be with any other village. I say that, <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah, it worked out for everyone, you know, like, um, um. You know, Frankie came, and you know, I thought that I was bringing these guys onto, you know, what would be called my team, but like we, we were, they were really like bringing me into their family in mm -hmm. a way, you know. And Mark came, and then Mark started training me. And uh, who'd you have for a boxing coach prior to Mark? I trained. My first boxing coach was this guy in New York, um, some Guatemalan guy. Awesome. I always loved boxing. Like besides mm -hmm. like fighting, I always loved boxing. You know. And I trained in um, I trained in New Brunswick boxing. It was a pretty fun gym. Uh, Steve Rivera, and had some really good boxers there, like all amateurs and stuff. And um, well, yeah, Mark is like a whole different level of uh, wait. Of there's, a, there's two Steve Riveras. Is it different? <laughs> different Steve Rivera. Oh, yeah, shit, boxing Steve Rivera. This is like a boxing. I'm uh, sure. I'm sure there's, there's even more than yeah. two. <laughs> <laughs> neither, no, neither, neither of these guys trained like any MMA guys. Right, they right. were like just Box straight like, up. I'm, I'm like Steve's yeah. a busy guy. Man. <laughs> He's going all the way up there. Straight to up boxing, boxing guys. Right. But then you know Mark came one day and it was actually like a, a Thanksgiving. He came to train Chris and I watched Mark train Chris and I was like, man, this guy's a good coach. Like I hope he has time to train me. I was like, man, I want to come to box. You know, Mark's gym. Mm. I come, you know, one day Mark is like, yeah, meet me at this address. And I, I thought I was going to show up and it was going to be, you know, a gym and it's, it's a huge house. It's a mansion. It's a mansion. Oh, yeah, it's mansion. I walk into, the, you know, a basement and I'm like, what's going on over here, you know? That's awesome. And yeah, he trained us and that was, that was one of the most fun times, man. You know, like I went like on a, I went like on a winning streak too and I won like a bunch of fights. Like Frankie won the title, you know. It yeah, was, that uh, was good times. Yeah. It was good times. Oh, put, yeah. put Jersey on the map. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I always like people ask like, well, you know, Jersey. We have good. We're good at combat sports, you know, and 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 the fighting especially. And they say why, and I think a reason is because you guys came here. That's that's a big reason because you know you and Henzo decided or Henzo decided to come here and you followed him and mm -hmm. you created this atmosphere this, or, or this culture of of jujitsu. You know, I mean, your black belts, Henzo's black belts. Sure. You know, I mean, we do like like New Jersey has some of the best wrestling, some of the best fighters, mm -hmm. some of the best jujitsu guys, and. Uh, you know, I definitely attribute a lot to to you guys coming and and deciding to pick this shitty ass weather. Thank God, <laughs> thank God, <laughs> you picked this. You so. got a lot of the Russian yeah. guys coming over here now. Yeah, too, yeah. Well, so yeah. yeah. I mean, that they're coming here for a reason. Right. You know? yeah, right. 
Yeah, I think Hans will come into New York and, and you know, uh, and then, you know, Matt has, you know, a couple right, of UFC right, champions yeah. there. We have a couple of UFC champions in New Jersey. I think for sure, you know, the way that New York att- attracts talent from all over the world. Right. You know? right. Was, right. was there money in, in BJJ tournaments back back then? Because, you know, we've had guys like Nicky Rod on that says he really doesn't have the desire to go to MMA now because mm-hmm. you can make so much. I mean, yeah. he's at the top of the food chain yeah. in what he does. He doesn't see that, you know, he'd be taking a cut and pay to cross over. But back when you were up and coming, were there BJJ tournaments? I mean, you kind of fell in it because mm-hmm. Henzo got hurt and you took his spot and it worked out great yeah. for you because you ended up making a career out of it. But were you competing back then in, in BJJ tournaments and was there any money in it? I was doing everything in, especially at the time. Like now the Jiu-Jitsu World Championships, as an example, are in the United States. Like some of the biggest Jiu-Jitsu tournaments are in the U.S. Back then... If I wanted to compete in a big tournament, I'd have to go back to Brazil. And, right. you know, I'm like a 20-year-old, like, you know, just teaching jiu-jitsu. I didn't have the money to travel back to Brazil at the time. You know, they started having some tournaments. I would do super fights. I'll make like a 1000 bucks here and, you know, 2000 bucks there. But it wasn't what it is now, yeah. you know. And then ADCCs, they paid the same price that they pay now. It's ten grand for the winner, you know. Yeah. Uh, we made some good money with sponsors when we went for ADCC. They had like, you know, basically the Sheiks would like pick teams and they would do like their own like, uh, 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 you know, fantasy ADCC yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. see who's going to win, who's not going to win. So we made good money then, but it wasn't, uh, it was definitely like not how it is now. Yeah. You know. Um, I didn't even realize till Frankie told me today, Gordon moved to Puerto Rico. Didn't, yeah. Didn't even realize that. Rico, yeah. Even his coach yeah. went over there. Danaher. Yeah. yeah. Moved with him, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I think he moved because all this, you know, yeah. political and you know, Corona, whatever. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I don't know if, if you move to Puerto Rico, you don't you lose your citizenship, which kind of is crazy because I mean, I thought it's a you know U.S. Commonwealth, but you can't vote. You can't. I don't know if you use your citizenship. You cannot vote in the in the, in yeah. the election, but you don't have to pay any income tax. If you yeah, live in Puerto Rico. Those guys are doing that's really pretty, good. It's uh, a pretty big incentive right supposedly there. Supposedly opening a school over there. Him and his coach are like in March. Yeah, but or I'm just wondering, like, who's going to go to the school? Yeah. Yeah, is it gonna I, people like going there for vacation? Those guys do really well with their like, online instructionals, you know. Mm, like yeah. they they have a very they're strong a like fanatics. Online, right? Yeah, you you have it. You yeah. you're on there too, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just did a guillotine DVD with BJJ fanatics. They're awesome. They're like the main, you know. They're like they're like the Airbnb. Everybody puts yeah. their house up there for yeah. rent, you know. <laughs> like they are they they've done an incredible job of creating a like a platform that you know brings some of the best instructors in the world, makes it accessible to people all over the world. I think the production is really nice. It's a pretty mm-hmm. streamlined way of producing a ton of content. And John and uh, Gordon and Gary, like those guys have a really strong presence and following online. So uh, I think they, they do yeah. really well selling DVDs. So yeah. if you could do that. You know? Do people, that's not DVD, like they say. Not DVDs, DVDs yeah. But, right, it's like a, Downloadables. Downloadable, yeah, yeah, digital, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We are saying that today, like. Nobody buys DVDs Nobody has anymore. DVDs, yeah. No one has a DVD <laughs> player at home anymore. But that's what they say, <laughs> DVDs, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, um, definitely a good avenue for these for these guys. And plus, like the EBIs and um, like Chelsea Sonnen has his yeah. own little grappling thing. Yeah. It's a good way for them to make some money. Yeah, a lot of these bigger events now they have deals with you know whether it's uh, Fight Pass yeah, yeah. or with Flow Grappling. You right. know, like Flow Grappling, from what I understand, like pays for some of these events and plays pays for some of these guys. Yeah, so it's you know they deserve it, man. They're incredible athletes. They're incredible yeah. fighters. It's. Uh, you know, nowadays, just as almost every weekend you could tune into a UFC or pretty yeah. much every weekend you could tune into at least like one or two world-class jiu-jitsu matches right. in, you know, one or two different events. You know, mm-hmm. not every match is going to be great and you have that turnover, but some really, really good guys and some great talent coming up too. I yeah. don't watch every UFC fight now. Do you? I, I do. I mean, it's my, yeah. you know, my I, job. I, I don't. I, I, mean, just, I don't. I, I mean, it's not like I, I have watch, to, but I, I, watch I do. the good I ones because not mostly. everyone is... You know, yeah, but that's card. the thing. That's what's great about a UFC card. Or a boxing card, it's not so much. I mean, mm-hmm. the boxing card is like, you don't even know who they are. You're waiting for the main event. In a, in a UFC fight, you might not know who they are, but these two good dudes are going to put on a hell of a yeah. show. I agree and with that. Fucking put, leave it all out there. You're like, holy yeah. shit, that was a great fight. You yeah. don't even know who they are. You know, and that, that's what's great. And I feel like this year especially, you've seen so many new faces. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I guess they, I think they signed like 175 new people or something this year or 200 people or something like that. I, I don't know if it's true or not. You would know, but I heard Dana didn't let one person go during this Not whole, one, this well, whole I don't COVID, know about right? a fighter, but not one employee like that, right. you know, helps run the show, which I mean, yeah. that's, that's impressive. Right. Yeah. I bet you're not in one Fortune 500 company could say that. Yeah. And you know? they just, you know, I guess uh, ESPN let a bunch of people go. Disney let a bunch of right. people go, you know, so right. like it's impressive for yeah. the UFC to kind of stick to their guns. Right. <clears throat> right. They got it done. 
Yeah. When everybody else wasn't getting it done. No, no. How do you think Roger would do in the UFC? <laughs> <laughs> I have no gas tank. Depends, I, on, depends on the training. If I couldn't finish it in the first minute, I'm done. <laughs> no, you know, I used to teach, like, uh, you know, informal BJJ, you know, mm-hmm. wrestling, MMA At class. the barn, the at, legendary at barn. barn. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, probably around 2007, 2008, you yeah, know, around that like time. That, yeah. And Roger used to come. Yeah. You know, He's a guy, to, man. Yeah, yeah. He, there, was a, there was a kid in there who I heard. Is in really great shape now. I think it was like uh, your friend's son or something, right? Yeah. But at yeah. the time, he was super heavy. He was, uh, I'm gonna say he was three bills, maybe more. <laughs> he was big, <laughs> and he was huge. Yeah. And every fuck, because I was like the only other big guy in there. Frankie's like, you gotta, you gotta fire him and carry that guy around. Like every <laughs> exercise, every pounds. exercise, Frankie's like, you guys peer teaming up. And I was like, motherfucker, the guy's huge. And, and it wasn't, Frank, it wasn't like. You know, rolling with him or whatever. That was, you know, once you're on the mat, everybody's kind of the same size. But it was like all the drills you had to do prior, like yeah. you know, all the carries around. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I got that guy again. Frankie's <laughs> warm up is harder than most people's <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, whole yeah. week of training. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and then Ricardo, you also got into judging for a little bit. Yeah, man. You know, uh, it was fun as soon as I as soon as I stopped fighting. Uh, Nick Lembo from the right. the New Jersey uh, Flight Control Board called me. Hey, Ricardo, you want to judge? And yeah, I did like a couple of smaller shows, and I did a couple a couple of big UFCs, um, like hanging out with like Oprah and like all these people yeah. like, around <laughs> the fourth row. It was pretty cool. But man, like eventually, wait, it was, Oprah? No, Oprah. It was one of one of those. I'm like, wait a minute, Oprah was that a UFC? There was some. Fight? There was somebody Maybe. in the front row. <laughs> Not Oprah. What's the Man, I forget now. Uh, Reed came and introduced me to her. It was one of the one of these famous TV leaders oh, that yeah. lives in North Jersey. Was looking for a place yeah. for her son to train. I'm, you know, I'm you know <laughs> recommending schools yeah, yeah. and things like that. I'm just, just find a Hansel school. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was fun. But man, eventually, you know, there was always like, oh, you know, what if it's a guy that's gonna fight Frankie and this and that and and you know, the team got a little bit bigger at the mm-hmm. time. We had like so many guys fighting. Right. That whenever they came to Jersey, we had somebody on the card, and yeah. you know, then I couldn't and conflict of interest. So a little whatnot. bit of a conflict of interest, and you know, I have the most fun like coaching. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you What do you think? I mean, obviously, judging is is uh, it's. And you know, it's it's always a a, a talking point mm-hmm. and how it could be better and or, or how bad it is or how bad the decision was. What, what do you think could be done to judging to make it a little bit better? Because it's I mean it's it's hard. It it is hard to judge a fight. I, I think to be a judge is a hard job to have. But what do you think you do to make it more consistent? I would not want to be a judge. I totally agree with you. But the inconsistency of like how a judge can watch the same fight as a judge next to them and be like five points off is yeah, like crazy. That- yeah, sometimes you know, there's a couple a couple commissions that have like some really big inconsistencies, like what you're talking about. You know, like sometimes you have a guy that you know just gives you know three rounds one way, then the other the other two judges give three three rounds another way. I think those guys have to be kind of like held accountable, you know? Man. Like it's like a fighter, you know, if you do good, you get your hand raised. If you do bad, you get your, you know, get out of here, mm-hmm. you know, with the with the judge. It has to be the same thing. Like if it starts to be too inconsistent. Right. Yeah, there's, the, there's no rep- there is there is no, yeah, yeah, A lot of times it just put guys up there and, hey, you know, uh, go do this. And, and there's it, no repercussions to like a like a mm, bad decision. Dana's you know, like, famous quote is, well, then don't we put it in the judge's hands. But yeah. I mean, it's, then, you know, then you're, that's, that's you're, so, you you're, can't you're, say that. Right. You I was going to say, say then you're making yourself very susceptible because yeah. you're right. putting yourself out there looking yeah. for a knockout or if you're going for the W. Then you, you just can't say that. You got the two mm. best athletes, you know, two yeah, best right. fighters in the world. You know, sometimes it's going to be a close fight. You know, it's not always going to be a shutout or, you know, one guy's going to walk away with a finish. And that's what the judges are for. I was thinking, mate, you know, cause they try to put the judges like outside. They think, you know, that will uh, don't let them hear the mm-hmm. the crowd. Okay. And I don't know. I don't know if that all matters. Sometimes I just think it, more education, you know, like I think at the end, education, you know, like a little bit of like more information. Hey, guys, listen, like here's a fight. You know, this guy punch, punched his face and then he took him down. And then this guy on the ground, like threw some elbows mm-hmm. from the bottom, like. Who are you gonna give it with? Like you yeah. know, you go over mm. scenarios and 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 then you go from there. Because what's really hard about MMA is like, all right, I jabbed somebody you know ten times in the face. They hit me with one right hand. Like which one right. changed yeah, right. the fight more? You know, or I hit him with ten two right hands. He kicked me you know ten times in the leg. How influential was damage too? You know, a lot yeah. of people. But wear that's, you know that's not. But damage is not. <laughs> A criteria no. for judging. I know, but how influential is? Oh it? yeah, yeah, no. very, very. Of yeah, course, you know? soon as you see blood, come on. Right. Yeah. You know? Unfortunately for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not good for you. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> there's I was a, thinking, there's a couple of fights that you definitely should have won, and I'm wondering yeah. if it's questionable because yeah. you do wear damage. But so it's bad. bad. I mean, you know, I fuck. I've been hit. You know, I told you that I, more people try to punch and kick me than anybody in the UFC ever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I get fucking. I thought you were number two. Around, man. I, think I might be number two I think now. He's number but, uh, two. I forget, I forget yeah, who's ahead. February six. I'm sure we'll uh, <laughs> <laughs> reclaim the spot. <laughs> oh my gosh. Man. <laughs> crazy i was thinking like what like why is it only three people maybe make it five people like five judges then you have a little bit more accountability you know so if there is one guy that's gonna fuck it up it'll say one out of five instead yeah. of one out of three i mean one Wait, three. what are you a liberal you're trying to pack the court yeah <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that you know the 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 I, I my opinion right now the athletes are ahead of the judges in knowledge you know and that's mm. a problem you yeah. know what i mean like it's like it's like you having these guys man that they've been training for so long like oh well, look at the look at some of the 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 level or the high level that you see with some of the finishes mm -hmm. on, on, on both ends of the spectrum you know like some guys uh you know with the striking and then some guys with the grappling and the it, judges don't see what's isn't going that on more of a reason though to get retired fighters to to judge i mean though that's that's what i was thinking i you think know, people that are involved in the sport somehow I, you know I, I, that's what i think i think you know the sport is still still pretty pretty young but people like yourself that get into the judging that that's like you know the more people that at least you know, if you can get a fighter, that'd be great. That's probably not going to be as realistic. But at least someone that has that's participated in the sport, has taken jiu-jitsu classes, has taken some striking classes. Yeah. You know, has been around fighters. I think it's the more you see that in a judge, it will be be will, what, what, have a better, better take on it. Because I literally don't know. What makes a judge a judge? How do they get that position? I, I don't know either. Yeah. I got to do, do you apply. You, you have to take a test. Or so anything, you or? you yeah you 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 apply and then you go through like the you know you go through the small events and you know you keep doing a good job then you get to the big events mm -hmm. you know but like a lot of times man the fighting like you know like the typical fan that's sitting in the stands mm -hmm. you know like on a more technical striking exchange mm -hmm. I have no idea what they just saw right, mm -hmm. right. they just gonna look for, to see a head getting pushed back right, right. or you know someone's shoulder movement and on the ground. For the most part, same thing. Right. You know, like it, the, it the, takes I think a high the level of understanding. Used to be worse, and I like what you said before. I think Joe Rogan has because he addresses the crowd a lot of the time. He'll be so, he'll be like, "Oh, knock it off! This is you know, yeah. this is art we're watching right here." Mm -hmm. I mean, I do think he's done something with that, and I, the crowd does seem to be better with it when it hits the mat. You know what I mean? I mean, I think now, especially like yeah. early on, yeah, like when it first got on Spike. He as long as people are active, if you're just laying on top of something, yeah, true. Well, they, I mean, they, the they, sport is going away from that too, just in general. I think. If you're laying on someone, they're gonna stand you up. They, like they, back yeah. in the day, you could lay on someone forever, you know. Yeah. And it kind of does take away from the fighting aspect of it a little bit, of the natural fighting aspect of it. Yeah. If I'm we're in the street and I fucking lay lay on top, you can't get off me. You can't get off. I'm on top of you, yeah. motherfucker. That's right. it. No right. one's no one's standing me up. Right. You know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As long as you're being a little active and throwing some yeah. punches, like yeah. I don't, shouldn't stand them up. You know, like. And I hate. I mean, you've seen literally some, and that's that's comes to the judge. That comes to the referees now where. Some people will be in like a, a half guard. It's a pretty good position in fucking MMA. Or even the mount. I've seen people get like st stood up in like those yeah. positions. I'm like, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, like the same thing, you know, like the, like who reveals those guys? You know, like, right. you know what I mean? Like who who where's the feedback and and who ultimately is the, the referees and judges, you know, manager or whatever. Yeah, like, I yeah. don't think there is a... I, nah, I, I yeah. go back to that story, and I don't even think she's a ref anymore, but, you know, talking about professionalism, uh, I thought yeah. it was extremely unprofessional. Yeah. What, who were you fighting? I can't remember. We um, were in Vegas for that. I Aldo, right? right? I think, yeah, it was. It was Aldo. Um, actually, it was here. It was here when you fought him here. You fought him at Prudential, right? No, I never fought him. No, I was in oh, Vegas. Oh, was it? Okay, mm -hmm. never mind. It was. Oh, yeah, we were out there with Chris, I think. Chris Smith was with us, mm -hmm. I, I believe. Anyway, you were fighting uh, Aldo, and we had, like, front row, and she stopped. That, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. The, the girl right the, 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 the blonde hair shag pony. She looked like, like a horse face <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> oh, she was rough looking. <laughs> No, Any, she's real tall, real tall. Uh, she's refed. You, dude, you, you definitely in Jersey. Yeah. So she refed for the UFC. She always oh. did this thing at the beginning of her, her uh, you know, when they started, she did this thing. Well, that was, did that's that. what Lane's Mills used yeah. to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, we were in the front row, and obviously she must have known we're from Jersey. We're fucking hooting and hollering for Frankie and shit. And she, I, I don't want to say verbatim exactly what she said. Can I, I can't remember, but I think it was, you know your boy's going down tonight, don't you? As she walked past us. And I was like, oh. at first, like, I didn't even comprehend what she said because it was like, it was so foreign that somebody in that position would say that. I was just kind of like, ah. And then I was like, oh, fuck, did she say what I thought she just said? Yeah. And, you know, yeah. the people I was with was like, yeah. 
And then she wasn't reffing me. She wasn't reffing my fight. I mean, that would have been no. real fucked yeah, up. But no. I mean, still, just the fact, yeah. like, yo, keep yeah. that shit to yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with the with the the referees, man, like I, I think that's the hardest job. Yeah. It you is. Know, like, I don't want to be. It ref, happens man. so fast. Yeah. And I think you know some of the referees that I've seen now, like you know, they're gonna make mistakes every once in a while. Like I think that they, you know, now happen. they're like, man, you know, yeah, I tried my best, and right. and that's all yeah. I can do as long as they have the safety of the fighter but first. That's it, man. Minim think, minimizing their impression on the right, result. Right. Right. That's the thing. Don't get like don't get involved. That's yeah. the best ref. Who, would, like, who I, would you guys say as two fighters? I'm not. I got to pick. Who would you guys say is the best ref in the game? Well, I, honestly, I, I never have a problem with any ref. I feel like because yeah. I never let them get involved. I'm constantly always doing shit. I don't. I'm never really fouling dudes. Yeah. I, I guess I've never really been fouled that much either. So I, I don't yeah. really have any problem with any referee. But I, to me. The be, like John McCarthy was no question. He, he but he's was not probably the bad, but he yeah. well, he's out of the game. Yeah. But I think Herb Dean I and Ma Herb Mark, Dean. Mark Goddard, Goddard is good, and, yeah. and that guy hers her got hers hers hers. Jason, dog. yeah, yeah Jason Jason Herb, Herb, yeah. A lot of the guys that start to do more the main fights, like they all become like pretty. They yeah. become pretty, sound, pretty good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like uh, even Big Dan, you know, he's good yeah, when he, the big yeah, guy. Big right? he's, yeah, all, he's always there with the big guys. that's a hard job. I've seen him break up a few fights. He throw dudes off that were you know. Go, he's crazy, know, bro. There's big ass. Dude. He makes the, these dudes yeah. look little. Him, bro, yeah. <laughs> he's he's a, he's a, I like him a lot. Yeah. Um, Mazagati, he's probably got to have the worst name in the sport. Yeah, doesn't yeah. He? Well, he's he takes, been gone for a long time. He takes a lot of heat. And, and, yeah. uh, Sometimes guys make a mistakes and they're not able to. I think come he's back. made a what number. Was it? Yamasaki, too, Yamasaki like, made a big yeah. mistake, you know? Yeah. Um, Wait, Yamasaki or Mazagati? No, Mazagati and Yamasaki. Yama, I, I think Yamasaki let a fight go too long in Brazil or something like that. I don't know what happened. Oh, shit. Uh, he oh Kevin Lee was choking um Michael Chiesa, and he, he and he stopped it. And he wasn't out at all. Oh yeah, yeah that yeah. 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 yeah yeah. Dana was pissed about that. Yeah yeah. 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 Sometimes that's gonna happen, man. Yeah. You know, like it's a crazy sport. It is the craziest sport. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's, it's it gonna is. happen. Yeah, you, you know? I mean, no one's no one's gonna be perfect. Ben Askren versus Robbie Lawler was a prime example of that that was definitely yeah soft but that was tough dude he literally his arm went it, it like did, I, if i was the ref i probably would stop it too it, at that yeah. point that was tough it did and that was herb dean who i love but i mean there's no question he wasn't out he immediately well put, right away but i mean it, yeah. look his arm went, out, went down yeah, you know yeah. yeah i think as long you know a lot of times people don't see what happens in the back like you get a ref like herb you know Mark Goddard, all mm. these guys, they come to the back and like, listen, this is what I expect you to get. This is what you can expect from me. This is what I expect from you. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and then you start to see a pattern. You kind of yep. get used to that guy. Like, I, the guys do a good job. If they make a mistake, sometimes it's like, yeah. I think yeah. I think Herb's got like one or two fights, doesn't he? Doesn't he have like oh, yeah. one? Oh yeah, he, he fought Forrest Griffin actually. He did. Herb Dean, yeah, no yeah. Way. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Way and back, way back. Yeah. In a, like a sanctioned fight. Yeah, yeah. No not, not in the parking lot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if it was an exhibition. Yeah, yeah. No, no. This was. I think this was before before they were both or before Forrest was in wow. UFC. No shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Forrest was a cop actually first. I didn't know that. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh, nice guy. That. Nice guy. Yeah, he's a, he's a really good guy, man. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. is. Remember that time we went with him, yeah. like he was riding his little scion, like yeah, his little yeah. pink scion, yeah, whatever won, that thing he was. Won, I think he wanted for the spike <laughs> show. He wanted a scion. He was taking. Yes, and he drove it forever. <laughs> yeah, he did, bro. Yeah, he literally forever. drove the wheels off that thing. Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah. champion, I think. Well, he was fighting for yeah. the title. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. caught a ride with yeah. him. Still driving. <laughs> yeah. He was yeah, driving yeah, that yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> well, that's a guy that's smart with his money. You know yeah. what I mean? So many people are bad with the money. He's a good dude. You um, you fought Jeff Munson, right? That I did. That Oh, it was a grappling. Yeah. Okay. That dude is a monster. Oh, he I was, mean, not tall ones. He looked like just, the thing. He's just wide yeah, as he is. Yeah, 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 yeah. He has no yeah. neck, that guy. Yeah, yeah. None. He none. did great in the ADCC. Right? He the won first. a couple times, right? Yeah, he won twice, I think. Wow. No, Maybe sure. more than that. Yeah, he was really, really good. Yeah. More of like a stifling game, not right. super right. dynamic, but man, like very good. It's just incredibly strong, right? Yeah. There's right. no way that he was passing USADA testing. <laughs> <Was> there? No, <laughs> <laughs> no way. A lot of the, a lot of these guys are coming from the jiu-jitsu background, not possible. So. We've he, we've talked about that in here, Frankie. I don't want to say suggested, but is curious. Do you think you saw the testing is the same, no matter what country you're from, where you're from? Do you think it's the same? Do you think the same parameters are held up? Do you think they're as strict, or do you think the the United States is maybe a little stricter? I mean, his guy watches him take a shit. Doesn't yeah, even, dude. you know, literally oh. comes in the bathroom with him, literally to watch him take a and shit. Like stares at me. I'm like, it's fucking. I'm like, dude. I'm not pulling. I'm not a fucking Houdini here. You know? No. You don't Make think it so? Short, no. Yeah. Like how 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 you know? How are you gonna go track like 
you know, like one of the Dagestan guys, like all the way up in the mountain. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be hard. Right, you know, right, like not right. not to say that they're, they're cheating is just like it's you right. know it's impo- it's impossible. Yeah. But the possibility well, like is there Brazil, you could get away with it possibly if you wanted to. I mean, I think guys that want to do it, they're gonna do it no matter what, no yep. matter how much testing is going mm-hmm. on. Like guys that rely on well, that. Well, the rest. Speaking, speaking of that, Dillashaw is starting to bark a little bit, isn't oh, he? Oh, and that, he? that's crazy, man. He's, I, you know, he's listen, coming back soon, and he's like, "That's my belt. That's yeah. my belt." They're fighting for, like, bro. Yeah, you got caught doing EPO. You know, what that's I mean? what he got caught. Yeah, with, EPO. Yeah. That's like that. Like I feel like steroids. At least like, like, testosterone is like okay. You're replacing something you might not have. You know, it's, it's, it'll help you work out harder. But EPO is literally you're giving yourself. Cardio, mm-hmm. that's like that's as much as you can cheat. Yeah, you know, I don't know. And he wants to fight for this and that. It was it, it was but I tell you what, if if he has been, and because Cody has suggested that he's been on steroids for a long time. Yeah, he definitely mm-hmm. has. Yeah. And either either I mean I don't know. Who knows? Hopefully he doesn't. Hopefully he goes clean, comes back. Yeah. You know, I don't ever wish bad on anybody. But if he doesn't go back on steroids, or doesn't find another work away, like he doesn't find another workaround. And he's not on steroids, and he comes to that fucking fight, and third round comes around, and he starts huffing and puffing. He's yeah. gonna be fucking second guessing himself. Oh, yeah. That's for, for sure. sure. Yeah. The crazy part is he tested positive after losing, right? He lost yeah, to yeah. Um, uh, Cejudo. Cejudo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, and he tested positive. That's gonna but be dude, the but, ultimate win. But Cody's been saying, for, I mean, Forever. during their lead up yeah. to, for the fights, like oh, that he's always doing. He's been on shit for a long time. Said you, wow. you brought it to our camp. Or whatever. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Yeah, I think the guys, you know, outside of the U.S., it's definitely way harder to track them down. You right. Know, just, right. you know, there's no way that, you know, they'll have the same level of of professionalism that mm-hmm. we see from Musada over here. Yeah. You know, just Very geographically, true. too, you know, like the people that used to come get you guys, they'll come from Trenton and they always come to my school. A yeah. lot of times come to the school because it was like 10 minutes right. Right there, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know? Yeah. And they test you right on the spot? At, 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 yeah, at the school. So uh, how does that work? Like, like let's say they want to test you, mm-hmm. they call you to find out where you are. No, no, no. They, they just don't. show up. But but what if you're what if you're training? What if you're in Hamilton and they come here? Yeah, I have a schedule. I have to put my schedule. Okay. Although they get pretty lean. You just have to put. I mean, I do have my schedule. I do say where I am mostly. But say they did come here and I'm there, I'll be. I'll tell them. They'll call. They'll call. I'm like, listen, I'm I'm at training. They're like, okay, I'll, I'll, you know, either I'll come to you or you come to me right away. They give you a little leeway, you know. So, but yeah, it's. Uh, I think I've been tested almost fifty times. I think the fifty times you get a jacket. So, yeah. <laughs> crazy, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> that I've been COVID tested nine and zero, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I just got tested again yesterday, man. Yeah, again, like I don't my freaking like twentieth or something yeah. like that. Uh, crazy. I got tested last week. I had a scare at the school. You're doing the rapid. You're not doing the thing all the way in the back of your brain, right? I the, did. I did the, the Q-tip yeah. thing. You are. Right. I mean, it's like it's, it's, it's like whatever, just, right? Yeah, do it. Squeeze my eyes, yeah. you know, and just get it done. <laughs> Only for accuracy, though. Don't they say that is not as accurate as the blood, the rapid? I guess that is the rapid, isn't it? Which, I have which, no idea. Listen, man, thought, as long as I got a paper that says yeah, negative, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you know, I just I just heard uh, uh, about this t- uh, on a podcast, uh, the PCR test, the test that we t- take. Mm-hmm. It's like a, a spectrum. Right. It's not like you're right. positive or negative. So, like, say, and it's all about. It all has to do on, on how they the the virus, uh, I guess, uh, multiplies. So, if you're a 20 on that PCR, you're probably pretty fucking sick. You're gonna feel sick. Mm. If you're a 25, you're you're sick. 30, you're a little sick. At 35 and 40, like you're gonna probably feel fine. Yeah. They say you have such a little piece of the virus, but you're still gonna t- test positive. Mm. That's why there's so many positives. And, and, and the why false, and the false and negatives. And too. they think, like, and they think. Those asymptomatic people can't pass it, but pre-symptom. Which I don't know how the fuck makes sense, but pre-symptomatic people may be able to pass it. If that makes sense. So if someone is just about to start it's showing just, symptoms. Yeah, if they're about to start showing symptoms, and then they can pass yeah. it. But asymptomatic, if you never have symptoms, they probably can't pass it. All I know is that I've had people come to train on a Wednesday night. Um, you know, they train with other people. On a Friday, they wake up sick. They go get tested. They test positive. The people they train with never got anything. Yeah. So go wild. explain that. It's wild. You know, like, and you're doing jujitsu, you're like all up close, and yeah. personal as it gets. That's and there's right. a lot of people that retest days later and test yeah. negative. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's questionable, at least. Yeah. Well, I can't wait till it's done, if it mm-hmm. ever is going to be done. <laughs> I can't stand it anymore. Yeah. Man. It's yeah. crazy. You know, that's half the reason I think Gordon left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't blame him. I know he didn't like Jersey politics either yeah. because he was right. pretty outspoken about it. But 
They say, um, I mean, you got, you got a little history, I'm sure, that he was he was a pretty humble guy back in the day, but he's very outspoken now. Who? Gordon. Gordon? Yeah. Well, I mean, he, he's definitely, yo, he could talk just anything mm-hmm. he wants. He fucking says I it. Agree. Yeah. You know? I agree. <laughs> He's, he's the man, yeah, but back yeah. back in you know back in I guess his early. Well, he days was be, good. I remember he's him, undefeated, well, I remember, so he was I always him good. Walking into your place, yeah. he was a blue belt. He was always bigger than me. I'm little. He was always bigger than me, but he wasn't big like he is now. Yeah, but he was quiet. And right? this dude was fucking all over me. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy? Yeah, he you was know? good. He was good from the beginning. He was, he always had. You know, when he was like a purple belt, like like the skinny kid, maybe yeah. it was a little bit after. You know, he could do like Iron Cross. You know, what yeah, I mean? like yeah, on, on right. the rings. You know what I mean? Like there was definitely something special, about something him. special about him. Not only on the jiu-jitsu side, but on the on the athletic side. side. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah. he's not the guy that's gonna run fast and jump high, but just that you know that strength yep. and flexibility and dexterity and decision making. You know, yeah, that yeah. dude's got it. Yeah, you yeah. Know, for sure. Yeah, him and him and Hodger, that'd be crazy. Hodge is probably the, the the right. He's probably the Michael Jordan of it. Yeah, he won the, the most different times. Different right? times, the, and he's and but Hodge won in Nogi as well, though, right? A bunch. I mean, I feel I feel the the best competitor I have ever seen was Hodge. Mm. You know, like just so not only the the guys that he beat, but how he beat those guys. Yeah, he you know? crushed everybody. Um, like the, he had a run at ADCC that he submitted every one of his matches in the weight in the open, but yeah. his matches on the open were. I think Verdum, Marcelo Garcia, yeah. uh, uh, and, uh, Andre Galvão, yeah, well, you know, yeah. like or maybe it wasn't these guys, it was other guys, yeah, or, or yeah. Drysdale, you yeah, know, like Jean-Jay, he sub- right? Yeah, yeah he yeah, submitted yeah. guys. They are, you know, like the the who's who of the sport, and and Gordon to a certain extent has done that, uh, but not yet to the extent of you know guys that have been able to be successful over multiple mm-hmm. generations. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah, I mean, yeah. like. Uh, so I think Gordon for sure is the the best guy now. I think he's the best uh, American grappler that we've had as far as jujitsu is concerned. And he's kind of I feel like he's just getting started. Man. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. young. Yeah. He's, he still has a lot more to show, yeah. and 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 you know as his, as he matures and, and you know as he goes deeper and deeper into his game, will be fun to watch. Yeah. His brother's pretty damn good too here. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Really, I heard he got big. Like his like, brother's you know, like yeah, definitely following suit. He was like a pudgy. He was like a pudgy little kid. Yeah, when, he was. When, when Gordon right? and Gary. He's definitely coming. shorter, like a smaller guy. Like he's probably about like like more like my size. But, yeah, but, but, but he looks pretty pretty jacked. Yeah. You he went to Puerto Rico too. Yeah. 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 Yep. 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 Wow. That's a uh, that's crazy. A lot of families do that though. There's a lot of families that you know if one brother does it. Oh yeah. I mean. Yeah. Nick Diaz did it. Nate wasn't interested in fighting at all at, at first, and then he and then he got. He, I remember the story he told something about. It. I used to see my brother running through the park, and I'd be sitting on the bench with my friend smoking weed. And he'd be like, "Come on, man, fucking do something with your life. Start training." So he started training. Really? You know, I didn't hear yeah. that. Yeah, Nate talked about it in some interview. He's my brother. Says, "Fucking man, put that shit down, man." <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are serious, though. They do like triathlons. Oh hell yeah, bro! They, get, they get after it, dude. Yeah, for sure. I I I I, I want to do. A, I say I want, I keep my fucking hips. I can't run, but I, I would love to do a marathon. Yeah, you a know, marathon. One, not one, really. yeah. one, not try. Yeah. Fuck a try. That's that twenty twenty. <laughs> that's 21 crazy, miles? man. Twenty six point two. Yeah, yeah. Twenty. Crazy. I don't even know. Twenty six point two. I think. Right, I was telling you. Frankie, I've been running quite a bit, and I to this day, you know, I think I ran like maybe like hundred miles a month. You know, it's, it's consi- hundred miles a month. Considerably, Jesus. it's considerable. You know, but still, I don't think I've done know, that in I my don't life. Think if I run a marathon, <laughs> I think I'm gonna die. I'm yeah. not even I'm gonna die. My foot's gonna break halfway through. <laughs> you know, like the physical pain that I go through on some of these longer runs. I'm like, man, yeah. I don't know how those guys do it. It's incredible. You guys, yeah, but, are, then, but then, like, okay, I you look <clears> at a marathon, like, holy shit. And then there's dudes like David Goggins and yeah, Cameron yeah. Haynes. They do like. Fucking hundred mile runs, yeah. two hundred fifty mile yeah. runs. Yeah. Like, I, I don't understand. There's people like Cameron Haynes, that stuff. the guy that does it barefoot most of the time. No, no, no. Mm-mm. I know David Goggins. He's a savage. He used to be fat. He was, yeah, yeah. 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 Crazy. They say He's, that once you get you once you get cert, past like a certain threshold, like you like you could keep going. Go. It's like, yeah. man, I don't know about that. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, how yeah. I feel about a marathon is how I feel about him <laughs> fighting five rounds. Like, I I fought, you know, at the highest level. I, my first fight was two 10-minute rounds, but I never did a five-rounder, you know, in the UFC. And to this day, like, when these guys do it, like, yeah. I never, like, take it for granted. You know, it's one of those things that's, like, to me. I mean, you get nervous you know. when he fights? Yeah. Do you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think about his fight coming up with San Hagen? 
I think he needs to dump this guy on his head a little bit. I mean, you go know, back to his wrestling. I'm sure St. Hagen is going to be watching this. Yeah. But I'm going to use the range. <laughs> I'm going to use my range. You know, just keep yeah. him out. Keep him on the outside. I, I felt like Frankie's last fight. It was a little bit of like the you know Frankie of old a little yep. bit. You yeah. know, and and I, I'd like to see more of that for this fight. Yeah. You know, I think it's uh, it's going to be a fun one. St. Hagen oh, yeah. is super talented. Mm -hmm. You know, I think. Uh, Frankie seems a little pissed lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did a big, uh, huge, like, uh, you know, not transformation, but like a big uh, the re re-motivation yeah. for 135. Yeah, you know, like that's, a, super, that's a big jump. Yeah. Super disciplined. Um, well, not not only did he do six weeks, he did 12. Well, no, was yeah, it 12? It was like, yeah, it was almost. Like 11 or 12 oh, weeks yeah. this guy did. Yeah. It's crazy, man. He was ripped. Yeah. You know, and I thought that, you know, he's usually a little grumpy fight yeah. week. And I was like, man, I don't know. I want to be around this guy <laughs> I remember with his wake cut, you know. Right, it was man. fine, yeah. Oh, right after you got back, like you didn't know when it was going to be rescheduled. We went to the boardwalk. And oh, went, did I we went in. fucking ham on. I did. Oh, we went to the... Uh, <laughs> went to Coors ice cream. The, yeah, we went to yeah the, ice cream. The, the seafood, seafood joint. Oh, yeah. We went to, yeah, we went crazy. I was like, I was standing next to him. And he's he shredded at the time, but he just didn't. He didn't know when the fight was going to get yeah. rescheduled, so he's like, "Fuck it, I'll just eat what I want until right. till I get a date." And I'm standing next to this guy on the boardwalk. He's absolutely shredded, eating ice cream. And I was like, "I'll probably never see this again." <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ricardo fought at 170 too. He, he did you really? What's yeah, your yeah. what's your walk around weight? I mean, now I'm way too heavy. I'm probably 200 Same. now. Yeah, but you know, not not as fit as back then. Yeah. It's been like ten years, man, since my last fight. Yeah. But um, my, fr I remember my first cut to seventy uh, was here in Jersey, actually. And you know, we're walking, we're going to the winds, and we walk out of the hallway. And I remember getting into the elevator, and I'm like looking around the elevator. I'm like this way, and I said, "Man, why did they put all these clothes inside the elevator?" I walk into the janitor's closet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the frick I was. You know, <laughs> and then we finally made. You know, finally made it to the arena. Because you were just so dehydrated. Yeah, man. People don't crazy. realize it, it fucks with you. Yeah, it fucks with you. Man. How would? How did? Wh what weight did you fight months in that? The guy is. Oh, that was grappling. So ah, was, okay. You know, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. He was. He was probably two forty, two fifty. I was like one ninety. You know, one ninety five. You know, they do like these open weights yeah, in jiu-jitsu. Right, right, right. There's no weight class. You know. But yeah, I probably cut like 25, 20 pounds, okay. you know. See, I tell him, he doesn't, like I said, everybody cuts at least 20 pounds. Yeah. yeah. No, I think you said 30, and yeah. I, I didn't believe that. I said the heavier yeah, they get, they yeah, cut more. Yeah. yeah. You know? 20 pounds That's crazy. Uh, for 170. Because this guy actually had to eat, you know. I mean, they didn't have a 155 when he yeah. started. And then he had to actually eat to make 155, basically. I mean, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, yeah. but, yeah, you no, know, he I certainly know. didn't have to cut. Now he's down at 135, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember walking him, you know, fighting for the t title, or defending his title at 55 and walking around like 55. Yeah. Like yeah. It's yeah. crazy. I used to eat breakfast in the morning weigh-ins. It's crazy. <laughs> Miss those days. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like guys, you know, the, the sport as a whole has gotten like better at yep. the whole week cut. For sure. You know, like for you guys sure. have way more support now mm -hmm. than we kind of had yeah. back in the day where everyone was just like the UFC doing their PI thing. too. It yeah. was amazing. Do you think um, giving up the percent, what, how much of your purse do you give up? If you miss weight, For, forty is it? twenty percent to third, depending on how much twenty. But oh, 20, it goes by how much? I think it goes on how much. Do you think that? Are, are you okay with that? Well, there's a lot of people that say they think it should be higher because nobody would ever miss. Yeah, weight well, they said you, give you, up. you should. You, I mean, I, you know, but I heard like this: you shouldn't be able to get a win bonus if you if you miss weight, no win bonus. Yeah. People be like, all right, I'll make fucking one. I'm making weight now. Yeah. 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 yeah you got short. I think people are like uh, when they once they switch the weigh-ins from uh, afternoon to morning. It's it's better for the fighter because you don't have to hold your weight all day, but it was harder for the fighter. People don't realize that your body holds on to weight in the morning more than it does in the afternoon. Yeah. And I think a lot of people miss weight, but now you're starting to see people, I think, figure it out now. Yeah. I think people just know how, how to get up early or Daniel Cormier whatever. figured it out. You just grabbed that towel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, you know, sometimes you got, accidents happen. You got a free pass on that one. Sometimes accidents happen, but for the most part, it's always the same people missing weight. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's mostly the repetitive. Yeah, you know, yeah and, guys, and yeah. usually that has to do with discipline. Yeah. Is it, is, sure. it, is it discipline or are they fighting in the wrong weight class? Well, it could be a little bit of both. You know, if you're to me, to me, is this? You're this is why. This is why. Like when I went down yeah. to 35, I was on point because I will never say I'm gonna fucking go down and not make weight. That won't happen. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. That, that's that's why I wouldn't. If I had any question, inkling, like uh, if I probably there's a chance I might not make it. I'm not committing to it. Mm -hmm. right. You know. Right. I mean, a guy like Anthony Johnson, he fought at yeah. 70, set one seven. Like how? Yep. Like I don't know how. So there's no wonder that he missed weight. Yeah. But yeah. then you know, you start to see some of these other these other people. Joe Joe Riggs, another yeah. guy. Um, yeah. BJ Penn, another yeah. guy. I mean, they fought at, you know, huge disparities in their weight classes. They yeah. Were in. yeah. 
Yeah, BJ fought Leota Machida. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> wow. In Japan, crazy. yeah, you're right. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, well, weight and cutting, uh, cutting weight is not fun. Mm. Have you ever had to go on like a diet? No. I've never done a professional sport per no. se. But I'm saying like a so diet. You never did a diet. Nope. Just your your hot bod. <laughs> <laughs> boom bod. Your boom bod. No, I just. Uh, I mean, I just clean up my diet. I don't yeah. count macros. I don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't do all that. I just clean up my. You know, you get in what you put out. You put mm-hmm. good stuff in. You get good stuff out. You know, and I know when I want to look better. You know, it's summertime. Everybody's at the beach and shit. I eat cleaner. You yeah. know, it's just simple yeah. simple math. I don't count macros and shit like that. Mm. It's also a lot to do with genetics. If you're genetically built like a shit bag, you got to work harder. You yeah, got to eat better. I, I you agree, know what I mean? Agree. Some guys Definitely. that can eat. You know, I saw um, Jorge Masvidal talking about even in his early days of, of fighting in the UFC, he would go to McDonald's three times a day and eat. You know what I mean? Like some guys, if that you're just, burning it, I don't think some it has guys to do with just the, get away with it. You know? But still, like you get away with it. But it's probably better to not eat that shit. Well, you right? get in, you get in what yeah. you put out. He puts better stuff in now, and he's a much better fighter. I'm yeah, sure. You true, know? true. So, but yeah. calories in, calories out, buddy. Yeah. yeah. It's like when we're like teenagers, we freaking eat. Like when my kids are teenagers, and they they could eat everything. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. How old are your kids? No. Eighteen and uh, oh. eighteen and sixteen. Oh, so do they train? A little bit. Okay. They're doing, they've been running lately. Yeah, they're, they're okay. kid, crush, his son Henzo crushes it cross country. It's his daughter Flavia, too. Same thing. No yeah. sure. Frankie yeah. actually came to see them at the state yeah, championships. Yeah, the, they had state championships at the bubble. Oh, no right shit. Right before Corona. That's what it, literally right before Oh, right, Corona. right yeah. here. No yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So they've, they've been more into running, you know. You guys, um, I, I think I have this right. Uh, do you mountain bike together? Yeah, you guys yeah. Yeah. mountain bike together, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like riding, man. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. I would seem I like that. I would think maybe I could get into it because at least a uh, running, forget it, man. Nah, fucking nah, this is bikes, so boring. But I feel like yeah, well, you're probably not burning the same calories because it's probably not as exerting. But what is a, it? Mountain biking. I'll burn more calories mountain biking oh, really? than I will run. Okay, hell yeah, really. Okay, hell yeah. because you told me at one, one point in time you only did what, no what, what, road bike. Road bike. I don't burn as many calories. But oh, mountain bike. Okay. I do because there's a lot. You how many your upper body a lot? You're you know. How sprinter. many miles do you usually do on the mountain bike? I thought you told me it wasn't that much. No, the miles isn't isn't that. I mean, probably ten to twelve miles. Okay. It'll do like an hour and a half. You know. Yeah. Um, we have a mutual friend too, uh, Mark Motor Pimp Mark. Oh yeah. He's always saying yeah, he's always right. like Ricardo is coming out riding today. You got to come out. So yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll get out there next summer. For sure. This guy's got a quad. I got some stuff up in yeah. Maine. I got to bring down. So yeah, I used to love going to the trails with him, man. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's like everything here in New Jersey is forbidden. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's like man, you're out there and you, you run the risk of getting your yeah. shit impounded no matter uh, where you yeah. go. You you're know? worried about you know freaking game wardens right. and this and that. You know, right. it's, it's uh, you know, yeah. got a hydro truck. It's but you still have their bike. Yeah, yeah. I have a KTM. Yeah, yeah. It's sweet. Yeah, yeah. We got to get out. Definitely. I don't. My, my kid has. I got. I got him an SSR. Mm-hmm. A little one ten. He's pretty good on that yeah. too. I got my kid one too, but they're a little too young for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like and the, the truth. The one thing you got to watch about those SSRs is the pipe gets ridiculously hot on those mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Watch yeah. they don't get burnt on yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm like scared of riding on the uh, road, but on the trails, I love it, man. Do yeah. so you have an uh, um, enduro? Yeah, like a, okay. so it just has really light, light license and everything. You, you doesn't have doesn't uh, have license. Okay. You know, so oh, so no like, headlight, taillight, blinker. So you can't ride you know, it from your house to the trail. No, it's not like an enduro no. setup. Okay, probably doesn't go any faster than like seventy miles. That's, That's all you need. Steve has trail. though. That's yeah. Steve. Steve has a uh, enduro. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, an enduro. Yeah. Um, only like a two fifty. So yeah. I don't think it goes yeah. that fast. You know, me and Mark went out one time, and we started riding. About ten minutes in, like in the middle, like in the pine barren somewhere, like he, you know, slams on the brakes. I almost, you know, go over him, and he dives and he's like, "Get down, get down!" I thought it was like a hunter or like some stuff. But it was an <laughs> albino deer. No like, shit. All white deer wow. running in the middle of the woods it was crazy. Wow. Yeah, that thing would be dead if Corey was with you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was nuts. Yeah, I wonder how that albino deer is even like. I mean, he stands out like a yeah. fucking sore thumb, right? <laughs> Why like, things bing, alive? Bing, bing, I was like, man, like, <laughs> I'm like rubbing my eyes. You know, it was crazy. <laughs> oh, that's wild. That's wild. Now, so what? What, what else? What else do you into besides jujitsu and? your family surfing man surfing yes yeah. I, I read that, that about you I read that, that. I was doing a little research on you and you surfing you're like a childhood surfer right you, I grew you, up right yeah. on the water yeah. my dad surfed you know so I before jujitsu, I was surfing 
Hmm. And uh, again, when I moved here, it's a little harder because in the winter it's freaking cold. Yeah, but yeah. I still go out. That's he, does. he goes out in the winter more more than summer. You say more, right? In, yeah. in Brazil, are there are there are there actually bigger breaks? I mean, can you? Because it's here, it's pretty much longboarding, yeah. right? For Man, the most part, where, where I grew up, there was like decent waves. Yeah. The waves here are better. Really? Where here, it's like in the winter. You know, in the winter, yeah. and it's cold, and you yeah. know, it's hard waves. You know, it's like you know hollow waves, yeah. and it, you know, it gets pretty big and scary and cro- cold. Yeah. It's like being out like in a frontier somewhere. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I keep saying uh, I, I, you know, I did try it. I did yeah. surf once, but we, we gotta, yeah. I gotta make that a hobby. I bring like the foam boards out in the summer with the kids. I go like early in the morning before yeah. the crowd comes out, and um, I did a lot this Wh- summer. What beach do you go to when you go here? Man, I usually go to like Spring Lake. Yeah, yeah. I know? was gonna say that's where a lot of people go. Yeah, yeah. I actually uh, like Sam Hammer. You yeah, know, like yeah. the guy that surfs yeah. injured. Mm-hmm. Like, he told me that man, it was like the most packed summer in the shore because yeah, you know, because yeah, of COVID, people, like, right? Of COVID, yeah. like people were just like everywhere. So right. his, his like surfing schools were like the most packed. Well, hiking seen. too wow. is ridiculous right yeah. now because everybody's in you know there's not yeah, nowhere to go true. indoor. Right. I got a ticket. I went to Bear Mountain. Took my kids to Bear Mountain. We hiked a trail. And apparently you can't have two tires on the asphalt or they write you a ticket. So I got a, I got a ticket, yeah. So what? There's no what? signs, no nothing, but they're just writing tickets left and right. Uh, yeah. well, I was the you. only car there with the New Jersey plate, though. Everybody oh, else was New York, and I was the only car with a ticket on the window. So, oh, Bear Mountain's in PA? No. Bear mm-hmm. Mountain's in New York? New York, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know that. It couldn't go anywhere, man. I remember in March when they closed the parks and mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We need vitamin D and this doesn't spread outside. It's crazy. Stay inside. Don't even get us <laughs> don't even get us <laughs> started. <laughs> that will go on. I know. People want a break from our COVID yeah, rants. Yeah. 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 But where where and then you surfed everywhere? A lot I've, of places? You know, usually when I travel I try to do like a like a surf trip. Ever done uh, Costa Rica? They say that's like. I haven't done Costa Rica, man. Mecca. I've been to Mexico, like a couple of different places in Mexico. I go to Puerto Rico a lot. I love Puerto Rico. Okay, it's it's awesome out there. Like on the west side of the yeah, island, yeah. it's beautiful. It reminds me a lot of Brazil. Is that um, Rincon? Rincon mm-hmm. and Aguadilla. Mm-hmm. You know, Aguadilla is like a little more north, a little bit less like uh, touristy. You know, like it's a little bit more more local. Mm-hmm. You know, last year I did a cool trip to to Mexico, like to the southern part part of Mexico, like. When you, if you look at Mexico, like it starts to bend in, and mm-hmm. so the coast like faces out, so it gets like waves coming from the on southern Pacific, hemisphere, yeah, the Pacific, on the Pacific yeah. side. It was beautiful, man. Like it was. My mother incredible. actually lives in Mexico yeah. now, full time. Yeah, incredible. I actually bought a bought a plane to like the wrong the wrong town. Did you really? So me and Monica show up with our surfboards to like some mountain town. Yeah, which that, was actually pretty cool. Is Oaxaca, which uh, is like uh, yeah. the, man, they have uh, amazing food. So we no ended up sure. like spending the night on Oaxaca. It was the state of Oaxaca, but like a different freaking. So I had to go buy a whole new flight. It was a nightmare, <laughs> man. But it was, it was the trip was. It was what trips are for. Yeah, right? man. Yeah, yeah. It was totally worth. We stayed with this guy that was a guide, and you know he's used to taking pro, pro surfers around. And I'm I'm definitely no pro surfer, but he knows all like the the cool secret Breaks spots that nobody goes to. You yeah. know, like gave us some tips. And it was amazing, amazing trip. Awesome. Now, aren't yeah. surfers like territorial? Right, they can be. Yeah. You know, but if you just most places, if you show up and you respect the locals yeah. and, you know, they see that you could at least, like, handle yourself in the water and you treat people with respect, then it's cool. Like, I've never, like, in my trips had, like... It's not like the movie Point Break. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> thinking. it can be, man, but it's kind of like, you know, you show up anywhere, like, you know, show up to, like, some bar and right, you've right. never been there and all the locals are hanging around right. and you start to, like, freaking, you know, act like a, like right. an idiot. Someone's going to punch you real quick. Yeah. So what happened when you showed like up with the blue oyster? Yeah. The blue oyster. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming sooner or later. Yeah. I knew it was coming. Yeah, surfing can be can can be like super territorial, but it's right. like man, like we're like big guys, right. freaking cauliflower ears, yeah, you know. Like, like, yeah, people are like, oh people man, don't fuck with you too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, well, Ricardo, man, this was uh, awesome having you on. It was amazing, man. You, Thank uh, you guys. We've been came in, talking some about having you on for yeah. shit Thank months you. and months now. So yeah, pleasure to have yeah, you, man. Thanks. Thank we'll, you so much. Uh, we'll have to revisit again, you know. For sure. So I'll uh, be a reoccurring guest on the on the couch. Yes, sir. Thanks, guys. Now you'll be at his fight February sixth. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Tune in February 6th. Hell yeah, everybody. <laughs> See the, lo- the length. I'm going to use the length, yeah. baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, words you've never said to Renee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys. Hey. Check us out. Champ of the Tramp. Thank you.